Arkland Earth is a paint that you use to paint onto the bases and what you do is you paint it on and then it uh, cracks and the cracks um, show up on, on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh show a little bit of it and uh, yeah like I said you want to use a brush that you're not really fond of or that you don't really need. And you paint on, paint it right onto the base there. Well I've actually heard that you're supposed to paint a different color, like a lower color that shows in the cracks, but that's okay. So you want to paint a good amount of this stuff. If you don't use enough, then when it dries, the cracks don't appear. Um, and if you use too much, then uh, same thing, it's too, it's too thick, but basically what I like to do is take this stuff and paint it across one leg. So in this case we'll use the leg with the bad mold line on it. across the breastplate. And why are we doing this? To show that this armor is corroding, it's, it's growing old and nasty, but uh, it's still being used. I'm also gonna paint some onto the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads, you don't have to go across the whole thing. Just want to make sure you don't cover the transfer. Remember, we're gonna have to go back once this is dry and crackling and paint it with uh, Death World, Death World Forest, or Death World Jungle, whatever that is. I think it's a, way, a great way, though, to add a look of decay. So while that is drying, we are going to paint these maggots, maggots, with Bugman's Glow. Ooh. Oops, too much on my brush. Two maggots here. <laughs> All right. Next, we are going to use Riza Rust. So the second of the technical paints that we're using, Riza Rust is a dry compound, which means that you use a dry brush or again, a, a brush that you don't really care for. Get it all over the tip, wash it or uh, wipe it off onto like a Kleenex or the edge of your painting table or whatever. And then when you apply it, you're going to just be splotching the stuff on. You don't want it to, the less you have on your on your um, paintbrush, actually, the better, because you don't want it to look like you're obviously painting something on. You almost want it to look like, like it, a dry dusting effect of it accumulating over a long amount of time. Now, you can't really substitute with a grep a ghrelin earth, but if you want to do this effect, but you don't have Rizza Rust, then you could use a paint like Fire Dragon Bright. 
which is also similarly a bright orange. Rizzarus is mainly just if you want it as a uh, dry compound. Okay, so I painted it on all of the silver parts. So these back spines, the exhaust ports, the gun. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the technical paint called Typhus Corrosion. This is a very uh, gritty, dirty brown wash. And it's supposed to be used to create streaking effects, but I like to use it to dapple onto my rusted equipment, specifically this bolter. Tones down the orange, makes it look a lot more aged. You can also do Agrax Earthshade and um, add in some diluted dryad bark. It'll achieve the same kind of effect. You don't want to put too much on the rest of the silver, but for the the bolter, I found that it it just looks so cool and old and rusted and grimy once it dries up. All right now we're gonna get into the awesome nitty gritty stuffs. Blood for the Blood God. Blood for the Blood God is the Citadel's answer to Tamiya Clear Red for all your bloody needs. And while I'm a huge fan of Tamiya Clear Red, I found that um, this is actually not so bad. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find all of the areas. Ah, oh, stupid camera. Like I formatted this card and everything and I don't know why it still cuts off after like five seconds of recording. So I'm trying to find all the areas where blood would naturally be popping out and I'm coating them. The thing I love about Nurgle is he's all about the uh. Nurgle is all about decay, rust, putrefaction, but he's also about continuous regrowth and uh, renewal because in order for something to continue to decay, it has to keep regenerating and rebuilding itself. So... I like to think that this guy is continually bleeding and his poor, uh, his poor blight grenade here also gets a little bit of it down the nose, down the mouth, leaking out of the eyes, out of the ears. Gross. So once that's done, what we're going to do is find. Nurgle's Rot. And this is like, if when you're sick, if the GW people come to your house and uh, take all of your Kleenexes and use tissues and just take what's in there and put it into a bottle, this is Nurgle's Rot. It is so gross and disgusting, but it's so awesome when you put it on a model, especially a Nurgle model. So why would his backpack be pumping anything else but Nurgle schnot and juices into, into this guy's helmet? I like to add, add, it, add it to all the ports there. You can add to taste, add more or less depending on what you want. Poisoned weapon, or poison close combat weapons, so we're going to add some boogers to his knife. Yay, boogers! And to show that he is disgusting, we're going to 
add some to all of his leaking bits. So there's a there's a fine line you want to get. I'm looking for a thick green booger effect with the blood. Bloods and boogers. Blood and boogers. So I'm going to try to find the places where I can add one or the other and have them complement each other and not mix too much. So blood seeping out of the helmet there, but then over the top you've got boogers. Boogers! And I'm going to add a little bit more to all of these sucking wounds where bolters have been blasted into him. Boogers! Boogers! <laughs> oh god, that's so gross. So you've got blood and boogers! Alright. And of course, finally, the uh, blight grenade here. Boogers. Cover his hand with it. Ugh. Yeah, you don't want this exploding near you. Booger bomb. Okay, I'm gonna throw up now. When I come back, actually the last thing we can do is the uh, visor. So we're gonna take Morn Fang Brown and we are going to paint it across the eyes. Sorry, we didn't do the, uh, the oxidizing part yet. Jamaica, stop calling me. Sorry about that. Okay, the next thing is right on top of that, we're going to add XV88. Oh boy, I'm screwing up. Major, that's right, we can clean it up in the end. Finally, Wild Rider Red, and you want this to be a really thin application. I can see my camera's uh, warning light is starting to go on because it's beginning to overheat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let all this dry I'm gonna let the Argelian Earth do its job and crack a little bit. And when we get back, we will do the oxidizing effect. Uh, before we do though, if you're um, making mistakes with the, with the face plate, like I'm doing, and just getting it all over the place, simple fix, just take your Abaddon Black, and all you're gonna do is paint a little line on the... You're painting a little line on the inside of the bottom of the visor. And don't worry if you get it onto the front part of the visor and you can see it kind of like that. That's that's no problem because we're going to go back with our Death World Forest and clean that right up. Just like that. A lot of people don't think that it's so easy to fix something like that and so you have like space marine helmets with their eyes looking really really poorly done but yeah simple fix okay we're gonna let all these cracks appear and dry and everything and then when we come back we are going to uh, continue you kind of see the cracks appearing in the, in the bottom stupid memory card yeah you can see the cracks kind of appearing there Really awesome. It's gonna look really, really good when it's when it dries and it's all uh, ready to go. Ooh, boogers! All right. So in the last part of this video, to finish this guy up, we've let our plague marine dry a little bit. We've let the 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 cracks appear in the armor. Let's take a look and see. That's how awesome these pieces really are. You can see it a little bit on his torso piece there. You really see it here in the leg, in the leg armor. 
awesome random pattern of cracks. So, <clears throat> if you want to go a little bit more crazy with the Dirty Nurgle theme, what you could do is take a texture paint, like the ones that Games Workshop makes for their bases, and actually put the texture paint on the tops of the um, these little exhaust ports. You could put put it on the face or on the armor or like on the gun to simulate like built up gunk and rust and uh, growths over the years and the centuries. I've decided not to do that, <clears throat> but that is definitely an option that you can do. All right, so <clears throat> once you've let the Ajele, Ajurlern, Agrelin Earth. Such a weird name. I don't even know what that's from. Once you've let the Agrelin Earth dry, we're going to take Death World Forest. Before we do our <clears throat> oxide, we're going to do. Uh, we're going to cover with the original color. So, what I like to do is. I'll take my Death World Forest and I water it down. You gotta make sure you water it down or else it might be too thick, okay? And we're going back over all of the Agrelin Earth parts, trying to keep these cracks in as much as possible. What you might wanna do is later on once all this dries to get the the surfaces of the cracks to show even more you could go back over with like an agrax earth shade or or maybe even again another seraphim sepia wash to really get into those cracks Yeah, watering it down is a it's gonna be a big help to be sure that it covers without obscuring the detail. Actually since the last clip I went out to have dinner at an awesome Korean yakiniku place and uh, I ate way too much and I forgot what this all looked like so now that I'm back and I'm seeing all this nastiness again oh, it's making me a little queasy that's because you're a big baby Oh, hello, Commissar. How's Quartermaster Dane settling in? Oh, he's fine. I'm just showing him the ropes, showing him around, introducing him to the crew. Commissar, some people say that you sound like Sean Connery. That's preposterous. I've never heard such a ridiculous thing in all of my life. All right, beautiful. Last thing we're gonna do is grab our Nikila Oxide. Sorry, I didn't realize I still had the uh, price tag on this thing. Peel that off. Now, this is a tricky one. I think that you can really get by with something like the, um, gosh, what, what is it, skink blue, <clears throat> temple guard blue, the light blue color, temple guard blue, I think it is. The thing with this is it's really watery, really, really watery. Even after you shake it up, um, it separates if you leave it around for a while, but it's, um, yeah, it's like temple guard blue, the layer paint. Not skink blue. I think skink blue is a is a dry compound, but it's really, really watery. And that's because they want you to it's almost like a glaze. 
what you're going to be doing is hitting all of the brass parts. So for our guy here, and you want to make sure that you don't have too much on your brush. You don't want it to get in there and obscure all the details, but you do want it to have good coverage. I've I've taken out right I've I've gone and I've looked at some some good oxidized metals and I think I've got a good idea of using this. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it right on the tip of my brush and I'm coloring where the bronze meets the green of the plate. And I'm going to put my paint right in there, if you could see in the corner. Let's zoom out a little bit, shall we? Looks like that. Now, I've seen uh, somebody using this to great effect on one of these, uh, one of the scenery pieces, the one with the the space marine, the giant space marine statue. Pretty much just like covered that and coated it with with this stuff, and it looked pretty nice. Somebody else I know has used this for painting a, a piece in the. Warhammer Fantasy scenery set, the the tower. We're painting this on the different bronze parts uh, and the brass parts. It actually came out really, really nice. It's just a question of control, I think. What you can also do another place you could put it is on these rivets, anywhere these rivets appear. Just put a little dab. I think that's going to look really nice when it dries. It's a fine line of verdigris. Or as I used to say until somebody correct me, verdigris. Verdigris. Hey, I gotta say you guys, uh, thank you for those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time and commenting and uh, I, I really don't want to start naming anyone because then I'm gonna be here all day naming you guys but I mean for for my painting challenges for my tutorials uh, it really really means a lot to me I started this channel actually to I've, I've mentioned this a few times but because a a friend of mine a local player asked me to or commissioned me to to paint a dwarf army of his, and um, I remember my first couple of videos were on the miners, the dwarf miners, and they were so out of focus because I started filming on a flip camera, so it was always out of focus. You think it's bad now? It was terrible back then, and um, gosh, I looked back at those videos the other day. I, I want to rewatch them and whoo it's back before I had a catchphrase or anything. Back before Igor and Lewis. Anyways, basically what I'm trying to say is thanks thanks you guys for uh, supporting my channel, watching and commenting. 
keeping me motivated so that I can continue to make these ridiculously long videos. Alright. So awesome, so awesome. So, it looks like that that is going to be it for the Nikila Oxidize part. What we're going to do now is we're going to... I'm going to take some seraphim sepia and water it down and see if it doesn't pick out a little bit of these cracks in the leg armor. I haven't done this yet, so we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll learn together. Kind of see the fine pattern. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. You can't really see it, but I think that's okay. I don't, I don't think you really need to see it from a whole table away. You can, tell, you can kind of tell it's there, and uh, I think that's that is enough for me. Okay, so to finish up, uh, I'm just going to take some some Codex Gray and paint it on the base. I'm using Codex Gray because I can't seem to find my Mechanicus Standard Gray. But um, if you've got a Mechanicus Standard Gray, that's that's really what I would be using. Nothing fancy, we're just going to dry brush some gray onto these rocks. Or onto this cork, rather, to simulate rocks. Yeah, that Nurgle's rot. Ooh, boy. It's like dried up snot on his bolter. It's the most disgusting things I've ever seen, master. I'm sure that's not true, Igor. No, no, I, I quite seriously think that it is one of the most Disgusting thing that I've ever seen. Look at it. Look at it. It looks like dried up boogers. All right, a little black around the base, and our plague marine will be finished. So I didn't get as much done this weekend as I was, as I was hoping to, but I, isn't that always the way it is? You get through the week and you say, man, I'm going to do more painting. I got to do more painting during the week. And then you say, oh, you know what? The weekend's on almost here. I'm going to spend all this time doing hobby stuff. And then personal stuff happens or other stuff happens. Video game stuff happens. I feel your pain, brothers. Nurgle Marine complete. Whoa, look at that. He looks awesome. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. I really, really am stoked with the way this guy turned out. Project first founding, continuing to roll on. Super stoked for the next... I don't even know what the next Legion is, but we're steadily going through all of the first founding Legions in their current 40k... Um, 40k 
what's the word, color schemes, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Why don't, before we go, why don't we give him a little bit of a shiny, uh, or a highlight to his horn. Rakar Flesh, gonna be right up there on the horn piece. Yeah, I think it's really cool that they included this this horn. With the along with the Prussian style helmets and the conversion kits. Alright, there you go. Stay tuned for more War Boss Tay videos. Please like and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. And sorry it keeps going in and out of focus. It's just crazy because of the amount of, I guess, work that I have to do to put into looking at it on the camera, making sure it's in focus and whatever. But yeah, this is how it turned out. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. Stay tuned for the next video. Latest players!